Something far greater than the $6 I had just won on line two. The third to last number, under the number 11, that same number 11 that had given me $6 on line two, had just given me $7,500 a month. <laughs> oh my God, that just scared me so bad. <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry, let me, let me try it again. Something far greater than the $6 I have won on line two Jesus Christ. <laughs> the third to the last number, under the number 11, that same number 11 that had given me $6 on line two had just given me $7,500 a month for life. I hadn't thanked God for anything in a long time. I had missed him more than the fantasy friends we were as kids, more than my cries to him over the past 13 years, more than my decision to be in a relationship that everyone saw through, but I couldn't. I didn't scream and I didn't yell, but I cried. I sobbed and teared over that ticket like a mother crying over her child that had been shot in the streets. It was deep. It reminded me that he had listened to me, that he was listening. And though he wasn't always there when I called, he just always seemed to be on time. Thank you, God. Thank you, I cried as I held the ticket to my chest. I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. I looked at it again and again. My sight blurred from all the tears. My eyelashes looked like the leaves on trees after a hard rain. Number 11, $7,500 a month for life. I looked at the winning numbers, 11, the middle number. I looked at it again and again, 11. My eyes darting back and forth from the, the 11 on the winning number line back to the 11 <laughs> on, the, on top of the win for life. Both numbers the same. I wasn't confused. I was a winner. I had just won $7,500 a month for life. I turned the ticket over and read the claiming instructions. I didn't have to take the installment payout. I could claim a lump sum of $1.5 million after taxes. $1.5 million, I said in my head. I'm a millionaire. After the clothes wash, I threw away everything except for one change of clothes. I dried them, then placed them in a duffel bag someone had left in one of the dryers. I needed a place to sleep till morning, just till the sun came up, and I would go from there. I didn't see the manager anywhere, so I went into the bathroom and locked the door. I sat on a chair in a corner with the duffel bag behind my head against the wall as a pillow and my one for life ticket safely in my fanny pack around my waist and I went to sleep. I dreamed, though. I dreamed about my baby. We were on the bus going somewhere, but she was older, at least in her teens. She was the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen and she smiled really big. No bruises, no black eyes, no abuse. She was just beautiful. She was talking to me, but I couldn't hear her because of a loud banging. What? I can't hear you, I said to her. I love you, Ma. I love you, Mommy. The banging got louder and louder till it woke me up. Someone was banging on the bathroom door. I got up and grabbed my things. I felt my stomach. It was okay. I grabbed the duffel bag with my clothes. They were all there. Then I felt my fanny pack. I pulled the zipper open and looked inside. Oh, it was still there with my ID and state medical card. I opened the door. It was already daylight. The manager was cursing me out, telling me to get out of his laundromat. I pulled up my cell phone and turned it on. It was 7 a.m. I had slept for more than... I had slept for more than 10 hours in... in wait, let me... See, I pulled up my cell phone and I turned it on. It was 7 a.m. I had slept for more than 10 hours in that chair. How did 10 hours go by so fast? It felt like nothing at all. I slowly walked outside. It was Thursday morning. The working class was out and about, and a few strug stragglers, either on their walk of shame or just hungover. I was hungry, but Julio's wasn't open yet, not for another hour. So I decided to walk back downtown to the McDonald's across from the library on Bedford Street. I could eat and think there, plan some sort of life for my baby and I. I had never thought so hard in my life. What to do? Who to tell? I was going to tell my mom and brother, that was for sure, but not till I was settled down somewhere and happy. 
but where to go? Connecticut was a no. I couldn't be happy here. I thought about Virginia, Florida, California, even Canada. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. Belgium. Why not? I had lived there for three months with my brother. I was his driver when he played pro ball for them. It was 15 years ago, but the place hadn't, couldn't have changed much. I learned those streets and highways like the back of my hand in those three months, all the way into Rotterdam, Amsterdam, Harlem. I mean, Holland. I remembered how sad I was when I, we had to leave. So upset. Things were different now. It wasn't someone else's dime I was living on. It would be my own. Move out the way, Belgium. E is back. I had to trust someone. I started toward the train station. It was almost 8.30 when I saw a cab driver. Wait, 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 well, something went off. Okay, there's no way I could have woke, oh, it was 7.30, oh, there it is. It was 7.30 when I woke up. Okay, it was, I woke up at 7 a.m. Okay, well, it was one open till uh, 8, okay. Okay, I got it. I had to trust someone. I started toward the train station. It was almost 8:30 when I it was almost 8:30 when I saw a cab driver drive by. I knew that that would be my only way. I walked toward the cab stand and observed. Oh, excuse me. I needed someone who was not loud with their business and in everybody else's face. Someone who would step out on faith that I was trustworthy and wouldn't rob them. Let's see. Kind of get to the stage. I didn't see anyone at first. All of them were loud and talking, French and Jamaican to each other. They were in each other's faces, hustling for fares. I leaned against the stairway, just tired. I was so tired. I could barely hold my weight up. And then I saw her. She came down and pulled into the back of the line. She got out, lit a cigarette, and began smoking. No one looked at her or spoke to her. She didn't look at anyone or speak to them. It was like she wasn't even there. She was small, slim. Her facial features were strong as if she'd seen a lot of pain in her life. Her blonde hair was barely to her shoulders, and her bang was poofy on her forehead. She reminded me of my elementary school bus driver in Stratford. Her name was Lisa. I remember those days. Us South End kids used to give her hell. It was hard being inconspicuous. My bruises gave me away like free lunch, but I made it over to her. The tears started right away, and I mean immediately. I got close so she could see the color of my eyes, my bruised nose, and busted lip. I showed her my hospital bracelet and duffel bag. May I please speak with you inside of the cab? I I had asked her, tears spilling from my eyes. Sure, honey, she answered, a hint of accent to her tone. She rolled up the windows and turned on the air. I was so happy she did. I was so hot. What is it, she asked, looking at me through her rearview mirror. I gave it to her straight. My name is Ia. Ia Miller. I just broke up for good with my boyfriend, Waldo, who, as you can see, has no problem beating on me. I've been living on the street since yesterday after I caught him cheating on me. He kicked me out of his house, then he threw my clothes out on the street, and this is all I have left. I showed her the duffel bag, then continued. I was in the emergency last night. He bruised two of my ribs and did this to my face. I also found out that I'm three weeks pregnant with my first child. I smiled then, but not enough to stop the tears. He doesn't know I'm pregnant, and I was going to tell him, but now I don't want him. I don't want him to know. I was at the laundromat last night, washing the rest of my clothes. When I came across this, I had forgotten that I bought it. I pulled out the win for life ticket and held it in my hand. I sat down and scratched it, hoping at least to get my five dollars back so that I could at least eat. And then this happened. I leaned forward and showed her the ticket. I gave it to her to hold so she could see it for herself. Then I pointed to it. You see, Miss Cab Driver, $7,500 a month for life. Can you believe it? Thank God, I said to her. The driver turned around and looked at me. Her eyes had almost popped out of her head, and her mouth was so open. This is a blessing from God, honey. Congratulations. Is that what you wanted to tell me, she asked. No, there's something in this for you, for the both of us. She turned around in her seat and looked at me. I'm going to need you for the next two to three days, as long as it takes for me to get this money so that my baby and I can get out of town. I will pay you, miss. I hesitated. I didn't know her name. Lisa, she answered. I couldn't believe it. I fell back in my seat as I repeated. Lisa. No kidding. Miss Lisa, I'll pay you ten grand. I'll give you ten grand to take me everywhere I need to go to get this money in my hand. I need you by my side, if you have to, in order to trust me. Please, Miss Lisa, can you help me, I asked. 
Honey, don't BS me. Tell me what you want. I don't have time for games. I scooted forward and placed my hand on her shoulder. She looked at me. I BS you not. I need you for the next two to three days, as long as it takes. I'm asking you now because I will not have the money today. But I will if you'll trust me. Please, Miss Lisa, I do, I do not want Waldo to know. To know I have this money. I can imagine the kind of monster he'll become. Please, please help me. I am not in a good place. I need someone to help me, and I promise you with everything I have that you will not regret it. I couldn't have said it any better. I couldn't have given it, given it to her more than that. I clenched my hands together, praying that she'd believe me. I kept my eyes on her face. She was looking at me, looking for deception or maybe a thief or a liar under my busted lip and bruised nose. When she looked in my eyes and saw how clear and open they were, how I looked at her with no trickery or deceit, finally she gave in. Okay, honey, I'll help you. It was like a bell went off high up in a church, somewhere deep in my soul. This bell just rang and it rang and I didn't want it to stop. Where to, honey, she asked, peering at me once more through her rearview mirror. Connecticut Lottery Headquarters, Rocky Hill, Connecticut, I answered. I was so happy that I sat back in the seat, then buckled my seatbelt like a child on their way to somewhere they did, that they wanted to go. Lisa pulled out, the cabbie sta- pulled out of the cabbie station on the north side of the Metro North Station and proceeded to I-95 northbound. She picked up her radio and called into dispatch. Hey, dispatch, Lisa Carroll here. Go ahead, Lisa Carroll, dispatch responded. Yeah, dispatch, I have a fare here for the whole day. Avert any new fares for me, she instructed. Got it, Lisa Carroll, over and out. Dispatch returned. Lisa hung up the walkie and emerged onto I-95 North. As we ascended up the ramp, I felt like I was already on the plane, like I was already there in Belgium. I was happy. I was just ready and happy, ready to be happy. I rubbed my belly and smiled to myself. I began planning a life that was not a dream. The home, the car, the security, the freedom. I was free now, free to be happy, and I was ready for it. I must have been talking to myself too loudly because Miss Lisa heard me. You okay, honey? She asked from the front. Have you ever felt like God picked you out of a crowd of a million suffering people and then saved you personally? I can't contain myself. That miserable, broken, abused, naive girl that ran from responsibility is so gone. She's dead and gone. For good. Thank you, God, for saving me. Miss Lisa... You just don't know what my life after high school has been like. Excuse my language, but when I graduated, I was just at the top of my world. Trade, and it was just like something just decided to just take me down and crash right into my dreams. I was crying again. Well, we all make mistakes, honey. But you can't give up on yourself. You got to pick up and keep on, she added. I understand, Miss Lisa. But I was so lost. It was like my mind got erased when I left for college. I became this person I didn't care whether I lived or died. I was so scared. I just followed the destructive path till I didn't even recognize myself anymore. What's your name again, honey? She asked. Ia, I answered. Ia Miller. Well, Ia, life can get away from you. It ain't easy by a long shot. You know what I think it is. I think that kids don't understand their elders. They don't respect us. So far from the respect I was taught as a child. Do you know that if I did not address my elder with the sir or ma'am, I would get smacked in the mouth or pinched? My parents didn't play when it came to respect and manners. These kids nowadays don't understand the struggles of their parents. They can't see past their own two eyes, she spoke. I understood her completely. There's a lot, there's a lot less to dream about nowadays. A lot of kids are proven wrong before they can prove it to themselves. It's hard to be yourself when you can just sell your soul and just be somebody else. I answered. I saw Lisa smile and I couldn't help but smile myself. Your first baby, she asked. Oh, I can't turn the page and I'm, and I'm counting down. Yes, Miss Lisa. All right, well, God, I'm going to have to stop here. But uh, I'm coming up at the end of part two. I'm going to try to continue on. All right, peace.